The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. The island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It would whisper promises in his ear, offering power for blood. But this time, Bernardo was sure he could master it. And so, Bernardo went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in the buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals, in frustration. They were still searching for a way in. Good. And he hadn't come too late. Renato knew the raw power he had gained could be molded into greatness. Really reason with an energy ball, he thought. some way to use the Iblis Stone. It was old, wasn't it? People were so much cleverer now, and Renato was pretty sure he was cleverer than most people. Ravens at least could not get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders.
It was a stone of the purest blackness. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch. But they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? said the stone anxiously. But even though Renardo knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. Why was he listening to a talking rock? Ah, but the rock had a point. If the stone could truly turn him into a powerful warrior, he could defeat the Emperor with the very weapon the wicked old toad had sought for himself. To be a hero, he had to sacrifice old friends sometimes especially when they've become enemies. As he placed the impossibly black crystal in his gauntlet, Renata had a sudden vision. Charred fields covered in dead ravens below a black sun. Was it the time of the lost gods? Be on Zenobia's island were no match for Renardo. They screamed as the stones sucked out their souls. And with each death, he felt stronger. Take the power, the stone told him. He couldn't do worse with Zenobia than he'd done with the core, could he? Anyone ever tell you you have a lovely eye? No? Zenobia was waiting for Renardo. She was alone, confident as always. Fire danced at the tips of her claws. Are you here to surrender? She seemed as cocksure as he felt. But she didn't know he had the stone. And I've missed you too, love. He chuckled. She spotted the stone and bolted without another word. Finally, Renato caught up to her. He had never seen her scared before. At school, she'd been the determined, brave one. Now her eyes were wide, frightened. He didn't like seeing her this way. Kill her, whispered the stone. You cannot win your rebellion without it. Please. No, said Zenobia. Not that way. Oh, they had been so close once. Could he really feed her soul to his demonic gem? But if he spared her, he would not get the full power of the stone. Oh, 
How could he be the hero he wanted to be? With a flick of his wrist, he slashed Zenobia's throat. Her eyes widened even more. And then the light went out of them. Bernardo felt amazing. Power was rushing into him like water from a burst dam. Salted the Iblis stone. Mm. Tasty. He felt a bit bad about killing her. He was pretty sure she still loved him. But needs must when the devil drives. Renato returned to the Farfarer and set a course for the Nexus. The Empire had a communication outpost there. He could call the Emperor directly. It was time to seize the outpost, and let the Emperor know what he had done. The Nexus was beautiful. He never realized how beautiful. Everything glowed. The wind was so sweet. The sun so soft. The stones so warm. Black raven feathers. Black feathers. Suddenly, his eyes are filled with them. He's falling through smoke under a dead sun. A voice calls him home. Is this a vision? Whose? Is this the time of the lost gods? Or the future? No matter. What mattered now was killing his way to the Imperial outpost and challenging the Emperor from there. Up ahead was Lupino. What was he doing here? Bernardo! <laughs> hey, buddy! Hey there, old buddy! Please don't kill me! Why would I kill you? Asked Bernardo, although he had been thinking about it. Well, uh, you've become... Uh, no, 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 I mean, no disrespect at all here. Uh, kind of... evil? Maybe uh, you should... I don't know, uh, go to the mountains to... Have a think. See if maybe you're sure the stone is not all that healthy a thing to keep. I suppose you want it, Renato said, and poked Lapino in the chest for emphasis. Oh, had he just killed Lapino? <laughs> Damn it. He'd go to the outpost, use their far speaker. Tell the Emperor what he'd done. And then, he'd go to the secret rebel base. Let them know he was ready to lead them to victory. Renato rampaged to the Imperial outpost like a water buffalo rampaging. At the last moment, he remembered not to kill the far speaker toad. After all, he wanted a word with the Emperor. But there was only silence. <laughs> the Emperor was scared, like little girl. Well, he would gather the rebel army and slaughter the Imperial fleet. Applauded the Iblis Stone. Tremendous. Then the Emperor would have to answer his far speaker, wouldn't he? Who are you? Asked a distant voice that sounded uncomfortably like Zenobia. What have you become? The mountains. Go to the mountains, urged another that sounded a bit like Lupino. 
Renato called the rebel council to let them know to gather their forces. Then he killed the far speaker toad. Why? Well, because to make sure his sword was sharp. Oh no, that's awful. So no one else could use it. Yes, that's it. Then he set off for the ruins and the secret rebel base. Ah, the ruins were crawling with ravens. Probably looking for the secret base, Renato thought. But then he realized they're probably looking for me. They must be very scared of me. Well, here I am. You, you are the funnest warrior ever, whispered the Iblastone. And he had to agree with it for once. Who was as good as Renato? Close to you. Renato was so happy. The stone was the best friend he'd ever had. Really, who would bury such a treasure in the desert? Soon, he'd go rally the rebellion and usher a new age for the islands of Erda. the stone. Let it make you a emperor. Come to think of it, Renato thought as he put down another raven, why shouldn't I be emperor? I, how did anybody get to be emperor anyway? By making war. I mean, not counting the transcendent emperor, obviously, who had banished the last gods and started time. Yes, he should be emperor. He would make a great emperor. Right, Stone? Renato strode into the council. Let's do this thing. Let's make me emperor. They looked confused and nervous. Ah, had he mentioned the emperor thing? Yeah, he meant to bring that up later. Um, I mean, let's go win this rebellion. He waved his sword around encouragingly. They ran. Cowards. He'd stop them. He cut down a few to inspire the others. But soon, there was no one to cut down. Well then, he'd have to attack the fleet alone. More for me, he said. Unless it was the stone that said it. Traitors. Traitors, all of them. They'd run rather than following him, rather than cheering him. What should he do to the cowards? Anything he wanted to. After all, he was a true hero. The best warrior there ever was. No one could stop him now. But first, finish him. The Emperor, that is. Where was the rebel fleet? They weren't even trying an assault. They were going to miss a day in history. The downfall of this dynasty. And a new one to take its place. He didn't have to kill all the ravens. He could enslave them, and enslave the toads too. All the animals would worship him as a god, for he had once been a god. They would willingly give him their blood and their souls. And the world would change. 
would become familiar again. Renardo was glowing with dark power. Already the sun had dimmed. He could do anything, he realized. He could wrap the island safely in smoke again. He was beyond a hero. He was going to become a god again. How odd, he thought, that the Iblis Stone had nothing to say about any of this. Well, no matter. Once he killed this petty toad emperor, he would bring back the Black Sun. found the Emperor and the Council huddling by his ship, plotting. They saw him and cowered before him. Back to hell, fiend, croaked the Emperor desperately. In the name of the Transcendent Emperor, croaked the Speaker. They held some arcane items he didn't recognize. He simply flexed his will and sucked their souls out of their bodies. And Iblis exulted. It is finished. And the void that had been a mere stone on a sword expanded. It stretched and ripped like a vast womb. And a gaze black and pitiless as the sun passed through the void into the land. And so time ended.